Hello, Hot Town Excel family. I am so glad and excited to be able to share the Lord of the Lord with you today. I'm Minister Johns, youth minister here at Hot Town Church, and I am absolutely grateful that we get to spend time in God's Word because we need God's Word if we're going to be sustained, if we're going to last in these last and evil days. Today, I want to talk to you about what it means to have a strength that is renewed what it means to have a strength that is renewed. Before we get started, we're going to open up in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We know that your word, in your word, there is spirit and there is life. And so God, we ask that your Holy Spirit have the right of way. Let us learn and grow in your word and give us the strength, God, renewed strength that only comes from serving and knowing you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to start our message out from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, beginning in verse 27. It reads like this. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks be unto God. Where is your strength? Question today, where is your strength? We live in a world that prides itself on all of its accomplishments. It prides itself on being able to do anything it sets its mind to. But still the question remains, where is your strength? Is it in the carnal things of this world? The truth is, for the children of God, we find our strength in the Holy Ghost. The Old Testament is full of examples of people placing their trust in Jehovah God. And they found out that he was indeed faithful. He does give strength to those that wait upon him. Let's think about Samson for a minute. When Samson relied on the Lord and was faithful to God, God strengthened him to perform his duties. But what happened? When he stopped relying on the Lord, the Lord would no longer strengthen him to fight against the enemies. When he gave up the secret of his strength and Delilah cut his hair, the Lord took his strength away. God gave Samson physical strength to do spiritual battles. Let's say that again. God gave Samson physical strength to do spiritual battles. Well, guess what? The same is true today. God gives us the physical strength and abilities to do spiritual things, but it's our choice, what we choose to do with the gift that God has given us. But we must be aware of the enemy's attack. We must pray. We must beware of Satan's attack to conquer our physical, to conquer our emotions, to conquer our uh, uh, soul realm, our will, our passions, our intellect, because that's what the enemy is after. So again, question, where is your strength? The fact that the text brings up the idea of renewed strength means that there is a weakness. So we might as well accept that in this flesh, there are some weaknesses. But we must know and identify the areas where we are weak because guess what? Satan knows where we're weak. Satan knows where we are uh, faulted in our flesh. Question, where is your strength? Isaiah 40 and verse 30 says this, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Now, this is interesting that the text chooses to use the strongest among men to make the point. It mentions the youth. This represents the ones who are physically in their prime, who are strong, who are able to endure, who are able to be able to withstand and go on. 
This is significant because the youth are the ones that should have strength to run, kind of like an Olympic runner, right? An Olympic runner trains and is in physical condition. You don't really see too many you know, older people running on, a, on an Olympics, right? Because their body's just not built for that. And so here the text is making it clear that the young will have the strength to run, run, and keep running. But it says young men, young men should utterly fall. Here young men are a symbol of strength and vigor. But God says that even they will grow weary and they will begin to faint. The text says young men will utterly fall. The message is clear here that the physical picture points to a spiritual picture of weariness and stumbling. This physical picture is a picture of the spirit realm of weariness and stumbling. Because what? We face the enemies of this world. We face the enemies of the devil. And we face the enemy of our own sinful flesh. How many times? How many times do we fall before those enemies? We don't really fall because God's hand is there to catch us. So we don't really fall, but we have stumbled. As the text said, we have stumbled and we do stumble because when we begin to walk away from what is right, that is righteousness, that's stumbling. When we begin to put God on the back burner, that is stumbling. OK, and so we haven't fell like we still believe in God. Like, I know God is real. God healed me. God did this. Yeah, we believe, but we have stumbled because we have turned our ways and our heart away from God. But there's good news in this text. Yeah, there is good news in this text that those who look to the Lord will have their strength renewed. Where is your strength? When we see our weaknesses, we turn to God. When we get discouraged, we turn to God. When we see how bad things are, guess what we do? We turn to God. Why? For renewed strength. Surely the God that created the universe, the heavens, and the earth can surely help us and give us strength. Why? Because his strength, he never faints. He never grows weary. He never gets tired. So we must not look to people. We must look to God to be our source of strength. The text says he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. I don't know about you, but I need my strength renewed. We need our strength renewed. And the prophet Isaiah declares in verse 31 that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What is God saying here? God is saying that the strength that we need isn't the strength, the strength that we've been trying to uh, have and been trying to use and getting right now is not the strength that we need in this season. God is saying that we need a renewed strength in this season. We need a renewed strength, not a carnal, physical strength. We need a strength and the power of Jehovah God. Because when he gives us his strength, it is renewed. It is fresh. He, we will be able to mount up. See, that's how we know that we have the strength of God because we will be able to do something. It will come with some fruit. We will begin to mount up on wings of an eagle. Now, let's think about an eagle for a second. An eagle soars high in the sky with little to no effort. He soars for hours and hours at time without fainting, without wavering. He's able to do this with ease, right? The eagle is a symbol of strength and power. And when our strength is renewed, we can operate and function in the strength and power of the Holy Ghost. Not only that, his word in verse 31 promises that those who run should not be weary and they that walk shall not faint. It shows us that God will truly indeed strengthen us to run and walk and not grow weary. When we operate in the strength of God, we can face peer pressure at school. We can face uh, opposition. We can face our haters. We can face uh, disappointment. We can face uh, disease and attacks. When we operate in the strength of God, we can face the opposition uh, or the, the sadness sometimes at home, the 
um, dysfunction in the workplace, we can face the difficulties of life when we have the strength of God and it's when it's renewed. But we have to do something. We must wait on the Lord for his direction. We must wait on the Lord and, hit, and, get, and get his direction. God wants us to see our weaknesses and carnality, and he wants us to wait. But while we wait, he wants us to pray for the strength to be renewed. God, we must go to God with our burdens and with our sins. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7 from the Amplified Version, it says, casting all of your cares, that is all of your anxieties, all of your worries, and all of your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. So after we cast our cares, we gotta do something. We have to wait. And a lot of times we get in a hurry. We want to see it, boom, boom, boom. We want everything to happen, boom. But after we have laid our concerns and our cares on God, that soul man, that flesh man wants to go, 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 go. But God is saying, I, you prayed, you cast, but now wait. Hear the voice of the Lord. Wait on the Lord to give you the strength. The Holy Spirit will bring strength to overcome Satan. He will bring strength to overcome sin. Right? Satan wants us to operate in our flesh. Right? He wants us to say, oh, I'm just human. That's just how I do. That's just how she is. That's just how he is. That's just how we do. No, that's the trick of the enemy. But we must rebuke that spirit and rebuke carnality and walk in the strength of who God wants us to be. 1 John 4 says this, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Verse 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, as I begin to close, I'm just going to give you a little snippet of what we're going to talk about Sunday. We're going to be talking about Samson. And if you know Samson, Samson was the original hero, right? He was a superhero. And he was an ordinary man uh, who received supernatural strength from the one true God with one purpose. And that is bringing hope and freedom to God's people who were crushed by the enemies of God. So what you need to know is that God created you and I for a higher purpose, higher purpose. God is calling us higher. He's created you, young person, for a higher purpose. And I hope you would join us this Sunday as we explore the life of Samson. I believe that God is going to uh, speak and he's going to have a word that I believe that you're going to enjoy and that you're going to be able to use to I live. I want you to know this, that I love you, that we love you, and that everything that you do, we want God to renew your strength. But we want you to exalt Christ's everlasting love and make God proud. Until next time, we'll, uh, we love you and we're praying the blessings of God and the peace of God be with you. Everybody say, you are my strength.